Hello everyone, Nubkex here, and welcome back to our viewer replay coaching. We're going to be diving into a game looking at some material uh, at a roundabout sort of top bronze, low silvery kind of level. Um, so yeah, I recorded the last four of these kind of in a bunch uh, together, uh, and now we're kind of jumping on to the next batch. So this was from five days ago, from the start of October. Uh, it's from Frontier Star. Bit of a new structure here, by the way. You see if I pop this up. It's a bit wonky with like display capture stuff, but a nubception there, I think. But uh, yeah, hopefully this will all be popping up on screen so you can check out this email with me. There's a lot of information in this email, but um, it was in one of the, the last videos I did. I was talking about Frontier Star. He's uh, been a long time subscriber of the channel, um, but he was asking for uh, some sort of advice on Hero League and what could be going wrong. I think in uh, his first season, he had a pretty tough time and had a kind of like a 38 or 40 percent win rate or something. I'm not exactly sure. But he was having a tough time anyway, so I was saying that perhaps there's something wrong with his drafting, or the heroes he's picking, or how he's building them or something. Uh, now we've got a game from him, so we can actually just dive into it and see if that is the case. So, first of all, let's just go through this. He's saying he's got a hero league game, he's playing Tyrael. Uh, and again, just mentioning that he's not good at drafting, so we're going to go through this. Here's the draft, we'll go through that as well. And then some talent picks. Uh, we'll go through them as we uh, cover them in the game. I think we'll, we'll stop at each one and go through each one as we go through. We won't go through like info dump too much at the start. But Jay's yeah, currently bronze 2. Last season he was silver 5, but fell to bronze. This season he placed bronze 4. Uh, he hasn't really cared about Hero League. So he's climbing at the moment. He's climbed from bronze 4 to bronze 2. That's great. I haven't really cared about Hero League. I'm currently trying to improve. I'm hoping to end the season in upper silver. If not gold, thank you. All right, so that's a that's a good goal. Uh, it's an ambitious goal, but that's good. Something to work for, and I like it. Um, let's go through the pick ban phase. In fact, let me hop into this and fast forward a little bit so you can see the sort of visual representation. There we go on the screen. That will probably help us out in um, getting more of a handle on this draft right here. So okay, first we had the bans and the picks. Uh, so the first ban, so the enemy team is going first. They went Li Ming, your team ban Sergeant Hammer. I think the Li Ming ban makes a lot of sense. We're on Dragonshire here in this particular game. Uh, so Dragonshire is very important to have heroes that are good at wave clear, heroes that are good at rotating between lanes and that are strong in smaller team fights in like 1v1s, 2v2s, 3v3s. Uh, because there's a lot of like movement around the maps and fighting those skirmishes and holding those points So that's very important when it comes to uh, the draft. Uh, I think the Li Ming ban is excellent. Li Ming obviously Once she gets a few levels on her, she gets good at wave clear with talents uh, She's very good at like just bursting people down exploding people. She's also very safe with teleport So she's pretty good in those lanes. She's great here on this map and just very strong in general uh, Your team, uh, I don't actually like the either of the bans that your team does. We'll talk about those but the sergeant hammer ban Sergeant Hammer is okay. Uh, she's a solid ranged uh, damage dealer. I don't think she stands out to me as being exceptionally strong on Dragonshire. Uh, for example, you say, like, we'll ban Sergeant Hammer. I think, well, we can just pick Vala. Vala does a similar thing. But I, I'd actually say Vala is probably better on Dragonshire because she's faster. She's more aggressive. Uh, so, yeah, I don't like the Sergeant Hammer ban. I don't think that makes any sense. Uh, then the enemy first pick, Morales. I think that's a, a good pick as well. Uh, especially we're looking at bronze, um, but Morales, she's very good at single target healing. She basically wins the lanes. So if Morales pushes up and tries to, you know, push down a lane and take control of one of the points, one of the uh, altery things, I don't even know what they're called. Um, shrines? Shrines. I think they're shrines. Uh, yeah, she's going to be able to do that very, very easily. Uh, Morales wins lanes. I think she's one of the best supports uh, at lower tiers of play, especially. Um, because just that power to win lanes is so important to get ahead in the early game. And that really helps you out. Um, but yeah, there you go. Anyway, your team picked up Gaslow and Falstad of two of your damage, as two of your damage dealers. I think they're actually both very good picks as well. Falstad brings good wave clear, good range damage. He's uh, reliable. He's safe. Um, and also very importantly, he brings global presence. Uh, and then the disengage with the gust, which is very important and impactful on Dragonshire. Particularly if you do get to level 20, I... I see from here that you don't get to level 20 but if you do epic mount talent is incredible that can almost win the map single-handedly because it gives you so much control of uh, the different uh, shrines uh, and i do like gaslo on this map as well uh like i said controlling those po uh, those points and zoning people is very important and that's what gaslo does he's quite strong in the smaller fights he throws down the turrets and it can be quite difficult for the enemy team to actually push in to those positions so for example gaslo could Hold a shrine on his own for quite a long time. So I actually, I like all of these picks so far. The enemy picks up Anubarak and Illidan. I feel that that's interesting. There's a bit of um, conflict there. So they've got these two heroes that want to dive very deep. But then they've got Morales, who's going to be stuck at the back. And I really can't follow in. Um, so they, they definitely, I would say, looking at that, 
they're definitely running a risk of two heroes dive in. Morales is at the back. The team becomes very split. Morales can't get in to heal them. Or she tries to go. This happens very often. She tries to go in to heal them. Puts herself in a lot of danger. Uh, so you've got quite a lot of options there. In terms of like counter dive or splitting the enemy team. Uh, that's something that would very much strike me. Um, however, I think Anubarak is fine. He doesn't. I don't think the Anubarak pick is good. He doesn't stand out to me as being uh, very good with this particular setup. For example, I think a Muradin would be much better. Muradin, much more flexible. Uh, he brings much more ability to get back and protect Morales, while also bringing a substantial amount of dive and stuff like that. And it removes that counter pick, because Muradin's a bit of a counter to Illidan, kind of. Uh, but yeah, I, I like the Illidan, uh, though. Uh, I think he's good uh, on this map. He's good in the smaller skirmishes. Um, it'll take him a while to take off. And he is a very difficult hero to play. So... This is a bronze level game, so maybe the Illidan pick is terrible. He's a very high skill cap hero. If the player is very good at Illidan, it might work out okay. It could work out terribly. Um, but yeah, I mean, in general, I would say Illidan is good. But, you know, that's one of the things that I learned, I think, from... And the feedback that was given as well from the last few viewer replays was that when we come to the bronze level games, it's a very different meta from Grandmaster. So, like, judging it at, like, the sort of Master Grandmaster level, I like the picks. I'm skeptical about the Anubarak. Um, but then when we go to the bronze level, you know, things could change up. Maybe the Illidan doesn't quite work out. We'll see when we get into the game. We've got a couple of really interesting bands. Your team bans Gul'dan. Again, that doesn't make any sense to me. I, I do think he's good on this map. He's a strong laner. He's a strong solo. Um, but again, like, I just think, okay, you ban Sergeant Hammer, you just pick Vala. They ban Gul'dan, you could just pick Thrall. Uh, I, I feel like there's so many other options. I don't feel like he really stands out. Or that he really brings so much counter to what you've got that it's needed to ban out. I mean, the Gazlo, maybe. You know, Gul'dan is decent at taking out the turrets. But it doesn't really strike me as, as an unnecessary ban by any means. Uh, I do, however, really like the Johanna ban. I think that's excellent. Um, number one, she's really good at the map. Really good at the map. Because she has so much wave clear. And then she can just rotate between those lanes very safely. And really help you get a good control of the map. And then she also brings a lot of blinds and CC against Illidan. So it's a pretty good pick. Uh, ban to get rid of there. Uh, then we've got the Zarya and Tyrael picks. And you are the Tyrael player. <laughs> Tyrael. Keeping it real, man. But uh, yeah. I, I, don't, I think these are two. I don't like these two picks. I think these two picks... Uh, really hurt your draft quite a lot. Uh, however, I don't think it's all on you. I think it's p uh, potentially also on this Arya a little bit. So the issue is that, okay, you've got a false stat doing range damage, and then you've got a Gazlo. Uh, in terms of uh, team fighting and stuff, though, um, sorry, I'm just getting some pop-ups there. I don't think it's going to show up in the video, so it's fine. But yeah, uh, where was I? Okay, so Zarya and Tyrael, I think they both excel at being these supportive heroes. I think they both excel at... I'm honestly, I'm a bit more critical of the, the trio pick. I think Zarya is good at anti-dive. She's good at protecting her teammates from, from dive. Um, because obviously, you know, you jump on top of her, she throws the shields down, and then suddenly you've you've dived in on the on the enemy team. Uh, they've got all these shields on, and you don't want to attack them. But you've just dived them, so you do. So she really counters that. And then, you know, if you do go in and you attack into those Zarya shields, she generates a lot of energy. Uh, and then... Um, she does a lot of damage to you then with that, that short range sort of attack that she has with the splash damage. So she can punish dive quite hard. Uh, now she doesn't bring much CC or really any CC. So against the Illidan, she might struggle a little bit. But I actually kind of like her into the Illidan and Uberak. Now I'm thinking about it. I actually quite like that. She can throw the expulsion zone down as well to zone out that back line that Morale is trying to come in. And uh, yeah, I like the Zarya pick. I do, actually. I quite like it now I think about it. But uh, yeah, I, I then because of that, I'm not a big fan of the Tyrael pick. So my big issue with the Tyrael pick here is that Tyrael really flourishes when you combine him with uh, a melee assassin. So, for example, I actually, luckily enough, had a Tyrael game up since uh, you sent me this replay. Uh, and in that Tyrael game, I combo uh, Tyrael with the Kerrigan. And I think you'll see that there's a, a couple of times, at least during that game, if I remember correctly, where that uh, proves to be a very effective combo. You know, the Kerrigan goes in, we get the Sanctification down on top of her, Suddenly she's immune to damage. She's in maelstroming and doing her combo and just stabbing people everywhere and doing tons of damage. And there's very little that the enemy team can do against that. So it makes for a very powerful dive combo. Um, you don't have that on your team, right? You've got Falstad, you've got Gazlo. The, uh, the only other free slot is a support because you've got a Zarya who, Zarya is kind of like half support, half warrior, half damage dealer. She's a bit of a weird mix, right? But you're basically fairly low on damage. Um, 
And yeah, I mean, you don't really need to enable the Gazlo to get in to be a melee assassin. That's not how Gazlo works. He's going to be kind of at the back, putting down the turrets, punching anyone who comes in. You're going to have uh, Falstad is going to be at the back as well. So you don't really have anything that synergizes that well with material. And honestly, I feel like with the Zarya, you want to be looking for a more damaging front line. You're saying that you're looking into ETC. I think ETC would have been okay for the crowd control that he brings. Bear in mind, they're going to have an Illidan diving on you as well. And with the Tyrael, that's basically no crowd control for the Illidan. Uh, so you're going to struggle with that. I would have said something like Muradin wouldn't be a terrible option for having just that crowd control, that lockdown on the Illidan. Try to take him out of it. And you can build a bit into damage in the later game. Give him the axe or something like that. Um... Arthas would really stand out to me as a pretty good pick here. A lot of counter dive with Arthas. They've got to dive into you doing your frozen wastes or frozen tempest or whatever it is. All that AoE damage, slowing down that Illidan, slowing down his attack speed. You do a lot of damage, you bring a lot of wave clear as well. Uh, the Johanna would have been great, but it was banned out. Uh, Diablo might also work too. Um, you bring a lot of damage, gank potential. Uh, not bad. So yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the Tyrael pick. I don't think it's awful. I don't think it's bad. I think it's it's decent enough. I like that you've got another warrior comboing with the Zarya. I like that a lot. However, I do feel like other warriors that are still up would have been better options. Um, so yeah, bear that in mind. So yeah, th there you go. Already we're kind of something that you could consider right there. Okay, the enemy team, they're building a lot of dive. How do I counter dive? What warriors are good against dive? Well, um, and Muradin and Arthas, they're still around. They can both do a lot of damage. Probably want to look at them. The Tyrael, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully it works pretty well, but... It's, it's not as good as you could do. But at the same time, like I said, it's not bad. It's not like you went, what am I going to build? I don't know. Uh, what would be really bad in this situation? Ah, uh, Leoric. Leoric will be great. And then they just go, oh, wait, shit. I've got nothing to lock down the Illidan. Uh, this isn't good at all. Um, yeah, you get wrecked. Something like that. I don't know. But anyway, uh, then the enemy followed up with Sonya and Nova. Uh, I quite like that as well. So they're going, they've got a lot of dive. And I like that they've got a second warrior. That's pretty good for bronze that people do that. Because that's something that people always overlook. Is Like you were saying, talking about having actually a good front line. Um, but yeah, they'll have the Sonya going in as well. Putting out that consistent damage. Very strong solo hero. Very good at taking mercs and all of that. And then I like the Nova as well. Just roaming around. Getting ganks and picks. I like I like what the enemy team has. Probably a bit more than your team. Then you pick up Malfurion. I think it's excellent as well. Kind of like the best healer in the game. Anyway, that is plenty of information. Let us turn off this. Let's get into this game. And uh, you are this player. Set the play button and we'll go. Uh, unfortunately, we are... We can zoom out still. Good. Uh, we got the old replay client. There was... As you can see, it's the Zarya patch. We're still on that patch. But there's been a couple of like little tweaks and stuff in between, like hot fixes. And I guess that's just counts as now being an older replay, uh, which makes this rather awkward. And we'll see how it goes. Anyway, let's take a quick little look at the talents right here before we get into this game. So you've gone for regen master at level one. I think it's pretty solid. In fact, we can because we got this, we can take a look at the other stuff. Uh, I mean, the purge evil, maybe. I think the regen master is pretty solid. I think any of these honestly would work pretty well. Uh, regen master. Obviously going to give you a bit of sustain, a bit more independent during the lane, and that's fine. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think any of the rest really stand out as being exceptionally better, so that's perfectly acceptable. Taking a quick look at the other stuff. Ooh, you got an auto attack based Falstad. That's quite interesting. Uh, Zarya's gone for this. I'm not sure when this was recorded. Again, remember, the day Zarya came out, I put out like my best Zarya builds thing, uh, and I was talking about how that would be the ideal one. Um, I don't think it's ideal anymore. I think like a sort of high energy base build is better now. But again, I don't know when this was recorded, so I can't say for sure. He's gone for breakdown makes sense. We got Shando's Clarity. Uh, I would be a little bit concerned with Shando's Clarity here. I would honestly prefer Moonburn probably in this. I don't feel like you really need the Innervate cooldown like dramatically for anyone on your team. I don't think you can use it on Zarya because she has no mana. Um, but yeah, I don't think Shando's Clarity is necessary. I like the Moonburn, which gives you extra... In fact, let me bring it up right here real quick. Uh, Moonburn, which increases Moonfire's damage to minions, mercenaries, and monsters, which will just really help, again, keep control of the waves, keep them pushed in, and keep that vision on the map. So I, I personally like it here. Uh, I tend to say that Moonburn is probably your default talent with Malfurion, but you go into Shando's Clarity if you've got a really good reason to. I don't think you're, the reason here is good enough, so there's something for that. Uh, the enemy team, they've got War Paint. They've got Trauma Trigger, it's fine. It's all Scarab, I think, is pretty bad, so that's good. And Covert Ops. Okay, huh, extra slows. I don't think it's fantastic either. Anyway, you are here uh, in the mid lane. You're doing some damage. I uh, The camera is still on him. <laughs> Why is the camera still on him? 
No, I lost the camera on the material. Can we do that? There we go. Okay, we fixed it. I was getting very confused. Right, Gazzo gets picked off. That's not very good. Again, one thing I would say instantly looking at this is that your lane divisions are all over the place. So this, again, this, you're not in huge control of this, uh, but your teammates are definitely doing it wrong. Um, looking at this map and the lanes, the way they're set up, how do we want to split it up? Probably we want the Falstad up top on his own. He's just going to stay up there. He's going to stay safe. Is it actually a bot Falstad? It's actually a bot Falstad. Okay, and he's following this Arya. But yeah, legitimately, you usually want Falstad probably be up on their own. The top lane is the solo lane because it's very much separated. You can see that these two lanes whoop, are very close together, whereas the, the top lane is very far away. So you're going to have like one hero up there. Then you have four heroes roaming between middle and bottom. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense to send Falstad up. He's safe. You know, if he does get take damage or get poked down, he can just Hearthstone and fly back. Not a big deal. And then you got the rest of you roaming here. Great for yourself and Zarya who want to collect the globes. Uh, she doesn't have the talents. Uh, she doesn't have any globe talents yet, but she will, presumably, I think, because you're saying that we will, or, oh, no, you're saying you will be. Okay, never mind. But yeah, she might want to roam for globes. Never mind. I'm incorrect on that. But yeah, you've got a pretty decent roaming comp here. Just kind of just setting up these turrets and zoning the enemy team off and just kind of farming up and waiting. Um, be very important, I think, for your teammates to to be looking at getting mercenaries, that's going to be a big deal. Get those mercenaries pushing with the sort of Zarya and uh, the Gazlo zoning on top of them. Anyway, let's continue on. So yeah, I, I thought it said, we will be roaming for regen. It just says, will be. So it's just you. Anyway, yeah, you're going to have a very tough time, obviously, with Falstead not being here. Uh, so that's something to always bear in mind, is if one of your teammates disconnects, you want to be playing very passive and just say, we are going to be losing this game until they come back. I don't know how the AI compares to like bronze players though, so who knows? Who knows, right? Anyway, the Zarya does get killed. Once again, I would say literally, I, I don't want to talk too much about that. Honestly, I want to focus mostly on you in this case. But yeah, I mean, your teammates should not be anywhere up the lane, any risky positions, because you have an AI. You want to basic, I mean, yeah, you basically have to hope that they reconnect within like a five minute, like five minutes would be pretty bad. Within a couple of minutes, uh, two or three minutes and then just accept you're gonna be losing the game pretty badly until then and there's nothing you can do about it honestly but this is uh, pretty interesting you're doing some decent damage here now bear in mind you're both very low on life uh, uh, not low on life but low on mana you, like you've got almost none same with Malfurion well Malfurion will be able to refill your mana a little bit realistically there's there's very little you can do right here now you do have control of the shrine but bear in mind you're not gonna be able to really get control of the rest of this if we look at the minimap right now, what is the value you're trying to get out of this? Are you trying to hold this for your teammates to capture the Dragonite? The answer is no. What you're trying to do at the moment is you're trying to kind of put some pressure on the bottom shrine and the threat of taking the Dragonite in the middle. You're not actually going to get these, but the reason you're not going to get them is because the enemy is going to send enough heroes to stop you. The value you're getting out of this is up top right here, okay? This Gaz, uh, Gaz though, pushing in, he's going to get a lot of structural damage. You can see he's almost taken out a tower. Uh, they're both completely out of ammunition, so he's going to be generating a lead for you up the top at the moment. It's Dragon Shard is one of the most complicated maps, right, in terms of strategy. It's all about how you move around the map um, and recognizing when you can hold things, when you can take them. Uh, but yeah, you definitely don't want to commit too hard here. In fact, Malfurion might be about to die. No, he just about makes it out. That's good. Um, again, you can stall here. You can do so for as long as you're safe. And it's looking pretty safe at the moment because Nova's almost out. I say at this point, uh, Nova's probably going to tap the well, come back. So you probably want to give it up. Uh, not very good roots from off your <laughs> right there. I'm not sure what those were for. Rooting this place, there was nothing there. But realistically, I'd also say at the moment, I think you've missed out on a lot of soak here for your lane. It's going to be very important to, to actually be near the enemy minions when they die and be paying attention to actually pushing that in. Zarya went down in the middle. I think your teammates were... Nova's taking this back, by the way. Use your D-Melf. Is he not using it? <laughs> that would be pretty bad. But anyway, um, yeah, I think Zarya pushed in, trying to take over middle. Obviously, they weren't in a position to actually be able to do that because Gazo was up top. Uh, Gazo was still up top. He got soloed out by the Sonya. So lots of errors all around. We'll see what you pick up at level 4 talent, though. That's the main thing we'll focus on. Again, I would be very much focused. Again, look right here. I'd be quite focused on pushing this wave much more than you are as well. Um, I guess it's something that players uh, tend to underestimate an awful lot. 
Number one, obviously, soaking the XP. So just getting the XP from minions dying is incredibly important. I think people are fairly aware of that, though. Um, because myself and every other one who covers YouTube uh, or Heroes of Storm on YouTube pretty much or streams it is always saying, you need to soak, you need to soak. It's super important. People kind of know. Uh, very important as well, though, to actually push the lanes, right? So by pushing the lanes in, you get a lot of vision. For example, up the top of this map, you got a big push coming in here. That gives you a lot of information as to what's happening up top of the map. If the enemy team wants to come up and take the shrine, well, they actually, yeah, they do own the shrine. The colors are really wonky. I'm very sorry. This is just the replay client. There's nothing I can do about it. It confuses me every time I try to do a replay. But I'm like, okay, your team is blue, but false has got a red health bar. This is a red thing controlling this. Who controls this? I think, again, this is blue, but I think it's you that controls it. So, yeah, it's confusing. But it looks like the enemy team controls this. But if they want to come in here now, or if they want to bring any heroes up there, they can't come through this lane. Or if they do, they can. But if they do, you'll know about it. You're going to see them coming in. Same thing here. If they want to come in this side, they basically can't. The only way for them to get in is through this side. And you probably see them. So it gives you so much control right here. So you could be pushing in your lane. You could also be doing damage to the bottom uh, wall right here. Uh, the ammo is getting depleted. But you could be pushing it harder, depleting it more. Uh, Anterior is pretty good at pushing the wave. Um, so you could be spending your mana to do that a bit more aggressively then hearthing back getting your mana back and coming back in uh, And then kind of playing around your hearthstone kind of intelligently But this is important because if you look at the enemy team and what they've got right if you look at what they've got Okay, the talents are flipped as well. He's got Legion of Beetles, but yeah, the Anubarak not very good at wave clear uh, Illidan is good, but it you know if you put pressure on it can be difficult for him to do uh, they've got a Morales and a Nova. Their team is very weak at wave clear. Sonya brings a lot. Illidan's okay. Uh, but Nova is one of the worst ranged wave clears in the game. Probably the worst ranged wave clear in the game. Uh, they've got awful wave clear. They're going to have a really difficult time when you push stuff in to defend it. They've got to defend it as melee heroes. Uh, and that is challenging, basically. It's very, very challenging. So you could definitely be exploiting this more. And bear in mind, we know that the Sonya has been up top lane for most of the game. That's most of their wave clear. They've only got these four heroes. None of them are good at it. So you should definitely be looking at pushing the waves and just letting the minions do their work at destroying the the, the, uh, the structures right here. Uh, you can use Righteousness to push the, push the wave very efficiently uh, because it shields up your, your minions. It lets them soak up a lot of damage. And you can kind of just trade with the enemy hero while that's going on. The minions will trade with each other and the shield will protect your ones. So yeah. That's something to watch out for here. But people often really underestimate just how important it is to actually, um, to actually, uh, yeah, push the minions in and make stuff happen. Uh, so stuff's going on here. Putting a lot of priority on keeping control of the shrine, and it's not too important. Honestly, it's really not too important to control the shrine. Uh, mana run, play safe. Yeah, so he's run out of mana. This is my shields from you again. At this stage, look, it's two of you against three of them. Honestly, you're gonna lose the shrine, right? You're gonna lose it. It's extremely unlikely that you're actually gonna be able to hold a shrine, especially against Lieutenant Morales. She's gonna win. You're gonna be beaten. You're gonna be pushed off. I'd say at this point, you wanna just back away, and it doesn't matter if you lose the shrine, right? That's not important. Uh, hopefully, up top lane, your teammates can make something happen. We've got a false set against the Sonya, so. But uh, yeah, and Illidan's in the middle. But Malfurion could go up, they could capture this middle one. Uh, Gazlo should be able to delay in the in the middle to stop them catching the Dragon Knight if they do cap it. But yeah, you need to rely on your teammates to do it. You have to say, look, realistically, we can't hold this. Bear in mind, it's very difficult to take a Dragon Knight. You have to control the top lane, the bottom lane, and the mid lane. That's very hard to do uh, when all the heroes are alive. Very difficult. But yeah, as you can see, if you look at here, both of you running away on really low health, really low mana right now. And now it's pretty bad. Now things get pretty bad. The enemy team has complete control of this bottom lane. They can just like push on here and do a lot of damage. Luckily, you do have your well, so you grab that. But it becomes very difficult for you to, to win this now. Very difficult to actually take this back against these heroes. They're going to get good wave pressure. Uh, and then they're also free with that good wave pressure to rotate away towards the middle, start putting pressure on and defending their heroes, taking them back that Dragon Knight. Because, uh, again, this is a bit of a stalemate up top. Um, so, yeah, watch out for that. Anyway, Malfurion is coming down to bottom lane with you. Level 4, by the way, went for Amplified Healing. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think it's a good choice. Uh, what other options do you have here? This is a good fight for you guys. You're actually winning. That's really good. The uh, Morales went into the middle. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, there's, there's bad rotations happening from everyone. So, I can tell you the ideal of what to do. But you have to sort of 
adapt that uh, to the sort of the standard play we're seeing. Um, I, I do think Amplified Healing, looking at this, Swift Retribution isn't terrible either to help protect the Gazlo and the uh, uh, Malfurion a bit more, but Amplified Healing, there's nothing wrong with it. You're going to have a lot of health in this game and you're able to be pretty aggressive. So the enemy team actually got a kill on the Gazlo after investing those heroes down there. So they lost the bottom lane, but in return, they got a bit of a win in middle. Uh, let's actually pause right here. So Fossil has come down to cover the middle lane, not terrible. Uh, you're, you guys are up here, and again, you're sort of depleting this ammo slowly because the enemy team is so bad at pushing this in. I mean, if Malfurion had Moonburn, by the way, imagine this would be much, much easier, right? It would have been a much smoother experience, uh, even exploiting that superior wave clear even more if he'd spec'd into it. It's a bit of a pity. The Zarya is trying to solo out Merc Camps. She's not very good at it, honestly. As you can see, she's got no energy, so she's only doing damage to it very slowly. I think she should really ping for help and get someone to go with her. Uh, like the false that he was there, or Gaslow would be ideal. Take it together, do it quicker. It's a bit of a misallocation of those resources. Enemy team is coming back. I mean, I think for you, it's not been the most exciting game so far, honestly. Uh, this is looking pretty good, though. Nice roots coming out. Falstad is focusing down this guy. Again, it's just the two tanks are smacking each other. There's not much going on, really. Uh, and there's not much you can do. We do have a siege camp pushing in. And I think your main goal at this point is to push in with the siege camp. Gaslow can put some pressure on top. I'd even send Falstad maybe back to deal with this. It's a tough choice. Either... You know what? I would say at this point, actually, with these heroes here, just push for this bottom fort, right? Because their wave clear is so weak. You've got the ranged advantage. I'd say push for it. And just let Illidan do his thing there. And basically, you're going to make a trade, but hopefully make a better trade for you. Up top, Gaslow is doing stuff. Sonya is up there with him. But yeah, you can see you got this big wave here. How is the enemy team going to actually clear this out? I don't know that they can. Um, so yeah, just push it really, really hard all the way into that, that fort. And just so long as you beat the Illidan, it's going to be fine. Alright, I don't I like. I really don't like that everyone is backing away here. I think this is a huge mistake. You've backed away. Malfurion's backed away. He's got no mana, but who cares? <laughs> Honestly, like, who cares if he's got no mana? He doesn't need it. He just needs to be there. He can throw out a couple of heals if he needs to. But for the most part, you don't need heals. You just need him there with the threat of pushing in on this. You're just trying to keep these siege minions alive. Just let them do their work and let your minions do their work. I think it's a big mistake to back off. And I don't like that you're backing off uh, either. You know, you're saying out of mana, it doesn't matter, right? You might actually get back. Like, their, their wave clear is so bad that you ran back, tapped the fountain, and you're still making it back on time. Again, I feel like you're playing way too scared. And I think the, the correct decision here, by far, is to trade aggressively. Uh, like, you come up here, the two of you together, yourself and the Falstad, um, you push the Illidan in a way, but you don't actually get anything out of it. The enemy team now is going to be able to clear up the siege camp. Pretty much no problem. And that's not ideal. So yeah, I think that's that's a really interesting play right there, right? Um, I, I presume from looking at this game so far, I very much get the impression that no one on your team noticed that, hey, the enemy's got like no wave clear. We can really exploit this. I don't think anyone noticed that at all. Uh, you're coming in, trying to do some damage here. And that's fine. I think he's very much out of position. There you go. Nice kill. This fight is going very well for you. I think you've pretty much got this. The Lieutenant Morales has been doing a pretty bad job healing them up, to be honest with you. And that's pretty nice. It's a pity the Siege Camp still isn't there. In fact, whoa, Gaslow has arrived here as well. Gaslow did die up top lane, but he's now using this opportunity to come join down bottom. I think it's a bit crazy that you're going to be pushing bottom now. Um, <laughs> and the Siege Camp isn't here, but this is the time to push. Uh, it's a bit risky. So I'm just going to get a lot of value on the top. She's probably going to take out this stuff. So I don't like the idea of leaving Sonya on her own at all. Uh, Falstad used his fly recently, so he won't be able to get up there. But, I mean, again... You know, you're going to be making this trade, but it's a big investment. Um, I think it, you needed to invest far less resources, your team, to get more out of that siege push than you do to get out of this. Like, the enemy team can... Hmm, they're going to really struggle to defend this, actually. It's been working pretty well. But I think it's dangerous. We'll see how much the Sony gets done in response. So that's interesting. I think if you'd done this earlier with the siege camp, it would have got a lot more done. What I'd like to see at this point as well is for your team to start. Let's check in on the Sonya. So, okay, so she got the top thing down. Uh, the enemy team hits level 10 before you do, by the way. So that's something to watch out for. Uh, because you're committing a lot of heroes just together into the lanes. Even though you're a fort up. Even though you're a fort up. This is what I'm talking about. 
you're behind in experience, right? Um, that's like, that's like a stored form of experience. Like the minions are gone. Um, when you lose the minions, the minions are gone forever. Uh, the enemy team, if they ever take a fort, right? If they like, if Sonya takes the top fort, that's gonna put them ahead because they've captured a lot more minion experience than you have. Whereas you've got a fort up, but the fort is still on the map for them to take. They, you know, they never lose the opportunity to take that fort in a sense. Uh, so that's something to watch out for. You guys are actually down a level, and this actually becomes a little bit risky. Not too risky. We do need to be a little bit cautious here at this stage, knowing that they've got level ten. Maybe they can make something happen. Anyway, before we go to level ten, though, let's talk about your level seven. Really don't like the follow through. Follow through is just a bad talent on Tyrael. Um, the problem with Tyrael is that his basic attacks are very fast. Uh, they don't hit that hard, but he hits very quickly. He does a fair amount of basic attack damage, but it's fast, quick attacks, uh, weak attacks. Um, follow through, you want someone who hits slowly and hits hard, like Thrall. And that's why Thrall is such an essential talent on Thrall. Thrall has a very slow attack speed, but he hits very, very hard. Uh, so follow through gets a lot of value on him. Uh, same thing with Nova, uh, with her one in the chamber, which is like an even more powerful version of follow through. But Nova also has a very slow attack speed, but it hits very hard. So those two heroes really excel with it. Uh, um, Zeratul is interesting because he hits pretty hard, but he's got a fast attack speed as well. He's a funny hero. But anyway, um, I think Reciprocate is probably the thing you want to go for the most. It also gives you even more wave clear uh, and wave control because you can go in W in the middle of the wave. You, yourself and your minions will soak up a lot of damage and then blam, you do an explosion, do a bit of damage to the enemy's wave, gets you a nice bit of wave clear, very mana efficient then at that point, so I like it. It's also going to help you out in the team fights, they're going to have a melee stack, which is going to, you know, do a fair bit of damage. So that's what I would go for it myself right there. I don't like the follow through. I think if you're going for damage, go for reciprocate. I like that you, I think in your email, you said that you chose it for damage and that's good. But I think reciprocate does the same job, just better. It's one of those cases where the talents aren't balanced that well. Uh, they should probably improve uh, Tyrael's version of follow through because he kind of needs it. Anyway, we're gonna have a big fight up here. Okay, this is going well for you, sort of. It's been a, a one for one so far. Where's the Sonya gun? Okay. I, I wasn't watching that, but this instantly strikes me as a mistake. I presume what has happened. This is what, if I was the Sonya right here, this is what I would do. I would say, okay, let's presume we're sort of like playing a, at a Grand Mastery type level. Everyone knows roughly speaking what they're doing. I say, okay, team is in a 4v5, but it's outside of our base. Uh, they traded one for one. They're having a big fight. I'm very far away. I'm not going to get there on time. Um, but presumably because it's so close to my base, my teammates will be able to retreat. It's not going to go too badly. Uh, there's no fort for the enemy team to take here. So yes, they'll lose the fight, but they should lose it quite gracefully and we'll be fine. I'm going to use this opportunity. Look, I've got a nice wave built up here. We're pushing in on the enemy's fort. I'm going to use this opportunity just to go ham on the enemy's fort. I'm just going to take it out. Just burn it down. Uh, so, you know, hopefully... Nothing much is going to come of this fight down here, but I'm going to get a lot of value. I presume, we'll find out now when we play, but I presume the Sonya went, oh my god, my teammates are fighting, and is now just running across the whole map to get there. She's just wasting her time. Uh, maybe she's gone for a Merc Camp or something, or she's gone back. I'm not sure, because I didn't pay too much attention. But yeah, she should 100% be pushing in here and getting value. Yeah, look at this. Okay, so Sonya was up top. She literally ran down through the entire map to get down and help her team. She would have achieved so much more for her team if she went... Hi, it's a 4v5, but we're over here. It's going to be fine. Uh, my teammates will be fine. Uh, let's get a ton of value pushing in up top instead. Um, how long does it take to run from there to there? It's like 30 seconds or something? It's 30 seconds where you've achieved absolutely nothing. You arrive, like, she arrives here, like, everyone's gone. <laughs> no one is there anymore. She's not doing anything. So, yeah, huge waste of time. She could have pushed in here. She could have been super risky and steal their bruisers. I wouldn't recommend that, but she could push in. Um, if she wasn't in a position to push in, maybe go take the bruisers and then push in or something like that. Just try to make something else happen because realistically, she's too far away to have any impact here, whereas she's in the perfect position to have so much of an impact up top. Let's take a quick look at the talents as well. So you went for judgment in this game. Um, yeah, I, it's a tough choice, right? Because I don't think the sanctification is going to get a ton of value. But it might get a little bit. I personally would have gone for Sanctification anyway. Uh, the issue is that I Sanctification is probably used best to complement Dive, like a Kerrigan. Uh, however, you could also use it defensively here to counter Dive, which would work very well. I mean, if you look what the enemy team actually picked, and they picked their Heroics before yours, uh, they have a triple tap. You can block that all with Sank. They've got... He's going to 
Illidan's gonna be hunting in. Uh, Nubarak's gonna dive in. Sonya actually picked up Leap as well. So they're gonna, like, dive on you really hard. And you can just, like, sit on top of Falstad or something, or Malfurion, and just throw it in Sanctification. You could all stand in it. Then suddenly, they've leaped in, they've hunted in, and they go, oh, we're just in the middle of this full enemy team. They're invulnerable for, like, three seconds. What can we do? Nothing, really. And they're gonna have a really horrible time, so... I personally would have gone for that. The judgment is okay. I mean, you don't have any dive to follow up on it, right? You go in. Cool. You caught someone. You stunned them. You knocked the enemies away as well. Cool. What are you going to do on that 1.5 second stun? I mean, Zarya's going to run up and start shooting them. But she's not really going to do much damage because she, you know, actually needs to generate energy first. Which means you need to be attacked first. Uh, I mean, Falstide could do something, maybe. But Gazlo? Gazlo's going to, like, run up and start building turrets. It's like, okay. I built a turret great you know he's more like they need to fight into him he's not running forwards and getting picks same with uh it works fairly well with Malfurion actually with the roots but yeah I'm skeptical we'll see how it works out but I'm not super keen on the judgment and I think if you're picking Tyrael to use judgment I feel I feel like I'm like why would you not pick like Arthas or Muradin someone who can do that sort of aggressive bruiser type warrior role uh much more effectively Diablo uh like just bring it with a lot more damage and and uh power anyway let's continue on Also wants to capture Dragon Knight. So Sony's gonna leap in and not kill anyone. You're just ignoring it. That's fine. Uh, and you're gonna try capture the Dragon Knight. I think that makes sense. You might even get this here. The enemy's out of position. Yep, nicely done. <laughs> They're gonna drop ship it. Ooh boy. They're drop shipping in. Okay, cool. I think you're very slow there using the savage charge. I think you had a large opportunity before that. But yeah, I mean, you could have punted Illid in like three seconds before. This is pretty good, though. Uh, usually with the first Dragonite, you're going to be looking to get walls, nothing more. Again, your W. I think you could have used this a long time ago. You know, the Illidan hunted in, I think there was a few seconds you could have knocked him away sooner. Uh, okay, we're killing that. So at this point, you want to get your minions pushing in. Not bad. But yeah, generally speaking, with the first Dragonite, as you can see, it's pretty weak. You're usually looking to get the walls, uh, the front walls. Uh, so you got that. I think this one's gone. Yeah, so that's fine. I think, yeah, pushing down the, the, the force is a good idea. But generally, take out the walls. You're get it, trying to get that XP. Um, I'm not sure why you're running away. Okay, let's rewind that slightly. That's very important. I was distracted thinking about walls. That is looked like a large misplay. Let's go back and check that out. Pretty short game, is it? Yeah, very short game today. All right, fine. Here we go. So yeah, I would say you're looking to push in on the fort. Realistically, you're probably not going to be able to take it. We'll see how it goes though. Again, they got a lot of melee heroes trying to defend. So it's going to be pretty difficult for them. But I would say you definitely want to get that minion wave pushing in. So it will... Whoa, we're going over here. Soak that damage for you. I didn't move that. That was the, the game. Okay. Alrighty. So here we go. Your Dragon Knight's dead. Uh, Gazlo and Malf are just like piecing out of there. Everyone's on full health though. Anubrak's almost dead. Okay, like, I've, I have no idea why you're teleporting over this wall. Um, number one, now you're, you're fucking miles away from everything. It's like, you cannot get back in here very easily. I guess maybe you're intending to judgment back over, but that's pretty messy. It's like, I poured over this wall, but I've got, like, a 70-second cool lane that will make up for it. It doesn't make any sense. Like, why would you not teleport back in the lane, right? It's just as safe. Like, you're not in any danger. You got a full, full health... Uh, four-man full health team right here you're gonna be fine you're just as safe but then you're in a position where instead of needing to either run in a big circle or judgment in you can just like turn around and walk back or you can just like be behind your allies and shield them up i also think you're perfectly healthy enough you're uh ethereal. you're very tanky you're fine uh you're not really in any danger of actually dying um so uh yeah i think you should be staying up there like your teammates are now being collapsed upon you're not even there Got a judgment in on the uh, Morales, and that's a pretty good move. The teammates pick up the Sonya, so I like that. The judgment working out really well there to interrupt the Morales healing, push her away, and then the Sonya gets blown up, so that's really nice. Your teammates do turn it around. But yeah, so it worked out well, but I think there's no reason to, to Eldrin Smite over here. Eldrin Smite back in the lane, then be with your teammates, you know, shield them up. Uh, when the Sonya jumps in, they're going to be fine. Then you could judgment in, would have worked out better. But yeah, you kind of got away with it because of judgment, but generally speaking, that's a pretty bad move, right? Alright, let's see how this keeps going here. Okay, cool. Took down a fort. Very nice. 
But yeah, like, as you can see, like, you guys are really crushing them. And a big part of that is when you get minion waves with you. You know, you're gonna notice, like, I think every fight you've been winning, you've had a big minion wave coming with you, and the enemy team can't clear it out very easily. Like, they have to go very all in. Uh, again, you're running very far away here, while your teammates are still slow, and they get picked off by the hunt. I really think you want to escort your teammates. Like, I, I think you were moving towards the siege camp, or maybe towards clearing up the bottom wave, right? But realistically, you need your teammates there to take it in a quick manner. So, I... You know, if you're going to move to this bush and then sit here and, or wherever it was and then sit and wait, uh, why not sit and wait beside your teammates uh, and, like, ping them for them to go? Um, there's, like, no reason to run here and then sit and wait. Um, whereas if you sit and wait with them, you protect them and you, you're still keeping them safe. Uh, and as we saw, like, it cost you because you weren't there and when they got dove on and you had to run back and uh, lost uh, out on a lot, actually. Like, if you had been there, maybe that person would have lived. I'm not sure how much health they had exactly, but you should have been there with them. Again, I feel like you're being a bit too scared and cautious as a warrior. You mean much more aggressive. You're much more uh, of the zoning thing for your team. Um, and, like, just it's very difficult to kill Tyrael, right? You're difficult to kill, so make use of that. However, I like this call a lot. Steal their bruiser camp. Two of their heroes are dead. So it's uh, a 3v4 at the moment because Gasso's nowhere near. So you can just make a lot of work happen here. This is pretty nice. Got no mana, which is unfortunate, but you pick up the kill, which is great. And then probably ping retreat on the Zarya, who's unnecessarily killing a Nova clone. That's fine. And you're running away back here. Okay, you wanted to grab the fountain. Maybe that's what you wanted to do earlier. That's actually, I like that. I, yeah, I really like the moves you're doing here at the moment, okay? So the enemy team is down a couple of heroes. Your teammates are pushing in with, um, with the bruiser camp up top. So your team... These three guys, they're going to be fine. They've got this top locked down. They're getting pressure on the fort. They're going to be able to capture the, the shrine as well. Awesome. Uh, Gazlo is down here. I actually thought he'd started the bruisers. He's only starting them now. That's okay. He's setting up a bit first. But uh, yeah, Gazlo's going to get these bruisers. going to give you a lot of pressure and control down here. So you're really well set up at this point in the game. And Talentier up as well. You're really well set up to keep these two shrines and to take the Dragonite. Really, really nice. I like the way you're moving as well. Um... It's really good to create this wave, get it pushing, get that vision down this bottom lane, which will help protect the Gazlo as well. You know, what if someone, what if the enemy team, like imagine you were up there with your team, Gazlo's down here, the enemy goes, okay, we won't contest them up here, but we'll come down and take the shrine. They take the shrine and go, hey, well, I guess we'll take the bruisers now as well. Uh, and then suddenly they find Gazlo, they get a free kill on Gazlo, they get the bruisers pushing, and suddenly you're in a tough spot. So I think your rotation here is actually really, really good. Get this wave pushing. Be there to back up Gazlo. Your teammates have got bruisers. They should be fine. Hey, there's a Nova. Gazlo's not even taking these. Or I don't know what Gazlo's doing. Okay, Gazlo apparently, I, I'm almost certain, left the bruisers to take the, the shrine. Complete waste of time. Actually, a really stupid move, honestly. Um, so, does he need to capture this shrine now? Or can he kill the bruisers and then capture it after? He captures it now. Can you take the Dragon Knight? Nope. Why not? Because you don't have the top one. So there's no, there's like literally no rush to take this shrine at all. What if the enemy captures this shrine? Again, who cares? They can't get the top one because your teammates have it. Take the bruisers. Look, I mean, he, he invested so much of his mana, his cooldowns, his turrets, to, uh, charges into... Almost, like, he pretty much has these taken. The one on high health is the squishy one that you can kill really quickly. He almost had those bruisers taken. There, there's no reason for him to come up here. And besides which, you're fucking there anyway. Like, you can come take it. Why does he need to take it? Tyrael is here. It's fine. And he's gonna leave it. He didn't even capture it. Oh, no. And he's going back. No. Gazlo, you are killing me. You're killing me. I, I want to be talking about how Gazlo is actually quite good on this map. Like... Maybe not the best, but better than you think. And this guy is just killing me with these moves. It's awful. Ah, anyway, to be fair, you should have captured it there. But Gazlo, please, dude. Anyway, like I said, your teammate picks your team. Uh, you had such a good map position, you can grab the Dragonite, no problem. In fact, the enemy team tried to fight this up top, and they lost Illidan, so that's great. And now your teammates are kind of kicking their ass. Uh, Gazlo is... He's, he really wants to shrine control, man. He really wants it controlled. But yeah, Gazlo should be able to get a good push down bottom. The Dragonite, you're just getting tons of damage here. Um, again, I would say you're on your own right here. So be pretty careful. Your teammate are, or team is looking to create a lot of pressure across the map, right? They're pushing in top. They're pushing in bottom as well. And the middle. I'd say you're taking a bit too much damage. Um, I'd probably be backing off instead of wasting the Dragonite on this. Uh, but it's okay. 
It just, I feel like he could have dragged today a little bit longer. Uh, to be honest with you. Gonna be hunted in on, that's fine. This time it's a pretty decent Eldruins. Like, Falset should be okay. He does have Gust available. So yeah, I mean, he's fine. Alright, Judgment in. It's okay, not bad. Nice damage from Falset coming out. The teammates are coming in. As well. Uh, bear in mind now, at this stage... You can, be, you can be very aggressive in this fight because, again, like I was mentioning earlier, you are Tyrael. You are a warrior. You're extremely difficult to kill. I think I did have a, a game on Tyrael on Dragonshire fairly recently as well. I was being like just super aggro in that game because they had like a Chromie or something. And I was able to like just move around all of her skill shots. I was being just insanely aggressive. So that might be kind of interesting to watch. But realistically, you have to be looking at Gazlo at the moment. This is the thing to focus on. He's just fucking robo-gobbling uh, gobbling up uh, their fort down here, their keep. Um, so that's the thing you want to pay attention to. We can see, actually, as I pause it, very nice. Sonya has arrived, so this is a 4v4. Um, this is a 1v1. Gaslo, probably going to die, but you should now be looking to uh, pursue this team fight pretty aggressively. I mean, if Falsa just goes them away, we're all going to be really sad, aren't we? Anyway, we're trying to kill the Illidan. Having a tough time, because he's got the Morales on them, I think. We'll probably switch around, focus, that's okay. He actually killed the Sonya, that's hilarious. I don't know how that happened. Alright, nice. Pick up the Anubarak. Very good. I presume this might even be close to the end of the game, to be honest. Gaslo. Gaslo is merciful. He decides not to destroy the keep. Instead, he's kind of Hearthstone first. Uh, again, like, there were no enemy heroes nearby. You'd kind of kill the ball. I think he could have squeezed out a couple extra hits uh, before Hearthstoning, but oh well. He, he's, got a, he's got his own way of playing the game, right? He's got his own way. Alright, this is really nice. You're getting a pretty strong push here. You went down to the siege camp, but your allies didn't come with you. Uh, again, I don't think they needed to. I really do think that this late in the gate, like, they only had Nova alive. Sony's just respawned. Uh, you could just, like, go on the, the keep, and you want to be tanking it yourself. You're going to have the Zarya shields. You could even juggle aggro a bit with the Zarya, potentially, um, to, to just, like, power her up in terms of energy. But, yeah, I mean, just, like, push in really aggressively, get a structural damage down, then back off and take the siege camp. There's no reason not to do that. I'd also be lucky, like, this keep should die. It's got no ammo or anything. <laughs> I don't think anyone has noticed that the bottom keep is basically dead. All the catapults you could be having. Oh well. Malfurion wants to retreat. Again, I, I love that, right? Malfurion is like, he just comes back here and he stands here. He's like, retreat, guys. I want to retreat. And then he's literally going to stand within, like, arm's reach of, like, all the shit happening over here. And he's just going to be like... Nah, no, fuck it. I'm just gonna stand and watch. I want to retreat. That's hilarious. Instead of, like, pinging retreat and then helping out his teammates until they follow up on the call, he's just gonna sit and watch. He is getting involved now. Good man himself. Uh, we'll see what happens here. We're gonna hunt in. Decent judgment. Uh, again, like, I don't think it does... It did about... It. Honestly, the judgment, you know, it does about as much as a Stormbolt in that sense. Um, I think the, the one on the Morales earlier was really good, but... There we go. We spotted the keep. Good stuff. Good stuff. You could just tank it, dude. Just tank it. It's got like three ammo left. You're fine. And there it goes. Very nice indeed. Good blocking for the Malfurion. I like it. The Zarya shield coming out as well. I like that too. Enemy just having a really difficult time actually doing anything to your team. I think lack of wave clear plus the, the melee nature, the dive heavy nature, I think is proving to be a real problem for them. They're just not good enough to execute a dive team and the, the commitment that you need to a specific kill, the focus that's required. Um, that's something I'm kind of taking away from this game watching this is I'm really not impressed with the dive teams, uh, the melee dive teams at this particular level of play. That They don't have a clue how to do it. I like the fact that Sony has leap. I think it's really bad as well. Anyway, here we go. We got a ton of siege. I presume this is going to be game right here. Gaslo is getting you even more mercenaries. He is, he you know he's he's get he's gone merc mad. He is gone merc mad. Listen, there's stuff happening over here, but this is where the real action is. So we're gonna stay over here. I want to keep the camera where it's at. This is the important stuff right here. All right, cool. You guys win the game. Well done. Right, let's uh, talk about your other talents. Your level 13 and 16 talents. Uh, let's pause it, I guess. Whoa. Alrighty. Anyway, here we go. Here are the stats at the end. Uh, we can see Zarya. Okay, this was probably recorded when Zarya was super overpowered. Her hero damage is off the charts. She has almost twice as much as anyone else. So if you're playing Bronze League at the moment, um, 
even with her nerfs, she's probably still overpowered. She seems to be doing incredibly well. She tanked up way more than you, even. She did twice her hero damage. Uh, yeah, Zarya is really good right now. There you go. Lesson learned. Uh, stats looking pretty reasonable otherwise. Um, yeah, I mean, the Malfurion could have a lot more siege damage. When you, if you compare the siege damage of your team to the siege damage of the enemy team, I mean, like I was kind of talking about, Sonya's got an awful lot of siege damage. But Morales can't really do anything. The Nova can't do anything. Then Illidan and Anubarak, they can do a little bit, but they're pretty low. Uh, I think the Illidan is just too difficult for them to play. I haven't watched it. Didn't do very good. Uh, and then Anubarak didn't really spec into uh, wave clear much. And he's not great anyway. But, I mean, yeah, it's like their second highest person, who's Anubarak, is their second highest siege damage. He is lower than your lowest. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you guys absolutely swamp them. I don't know if someone wants to add all of yours up and all of theirs up. It's going to be pretty stark anyway. Uh, and their hero damage is fairly low as well, all things considered. But, uh, yeah, let's take a look at the talents here. It kind of stands out. But zero deaths, well done. That's pretty good. Uh, so the Tyrael talents are over here. So, like the regen master, the amplified healing. I already mentioned follow through. I think it's just a weaker talent. Reciprocate is better. Talked about the judgment as well. Picked up angelic absorption. All right. In fact, ooh, what did I do? I pressed a button. I didn't mean to. I have no idea what that. I pressed B. I've... Is that bringing us back 10 seconds? I think it's bringing us, yeah, it brings us back 10 seconds. I'm learning things. All right, let's take a look-see here. Uh, so angelic absorption, I think it's a really bad choice. All right, I think this is a terrible choice. Um, have you been any danger of dying ever, even once in this game? Not at all. You've been absolutely crushing them. I think it's a complete waste of a talent. I don't think it's even that good when you would need some health. Um, I think the ones you really want to look at on this tier, maybe burning rage for more damage. Not a bad option. Um, also, like, they're melee stacked, so it's pretty good. And nice siege damage as well. But certainly from that point in the game onwards, I think you've been doing okay. I don't think you need it. I think Imposing Will is the one you really want to be looking at here. Like, really want to be looking at. Enemies that attack you, uh, while shielded, have their attack speed and movement speed slowed by 50% for two seconds. This is one of the best talents in the game. It's insane. It's so good. Uh, but this is just going to ruin Illidan's day, okay? And... And bear in mind, does he have immolation? I don't think he does. No, he doesn't. But, like, if he hits you with his W, with his, like, sweeping strikes through your team, if that hits you with your shield on, he gets 50% attack speed and movement speed slowed for, like, uh, two seconds. Illidan's going to hate that. You're going to ruin his life. Um, wouldn't have been made this game far easier. Same thing with Sonya. Sonya's coming in. She's going to be doing her whirlwind. She's going to trigger it all the time. Uh, Anubarak is probably going to trigger it a bit as well, depending again. Okay, he has Burning Rage, so I, I think that does trigger it too. I mean, there, there are so many heroes here that are going to be triggering this, and it's just going to let them be absolutely wrecked. And again, I mean, the, the movement speed slow as well just makes them so vulnerable to the Zarya being able to stay in range and focus fire for the Gazlo turrets to do work. Uh, it keeps Falstad safe. It keeps you way safe. It's just, yeah, Imposing Will would have been amazing in this game. Uh, it's going to be the go-to in, in most games. It's a bit overtuned, honestly. Um, and then level 16, went for Holy Ground. I think Holy Ground is a really good choice. I think uh, it's going to really help with picking off the Morales or picking off the Nova, so that's perfectly acceptable. Uh, Blood for Blood is also an option here, but I think Holy Ground was definitely the right choice there. So there you go. There's your last two talents. What did you say in your email, by the way, for level 20? Taking the Judgment upgrade. Uh, yeah, I, I think the Judgment upgrade does make sense in this particular game. I like it. Um, the other options here. I mean, Hardened Shield is normally the go-to for Tyrael. I really don't feel that you needed Hardened Shield at any stage in this game. I thought you had it completely under control. I think Angel of Justice, more cast range, and then the way lower cooldown would have been really nice for just getting more picks and stuff. I, I would have liked that for sure. Uh, so there you go. Um, yeah, I hope you found that kind of helpful. Uh, I think there's a lot of stuff in there just in terms of your positioning. And we talked a lot. Not Again, this isn't specifically feedback for you, I guess, but all the stuff about how your team is moving around the map. Um, it's good. It will help you improve uh, from understanding the sort of dynamics around the map for sure. Um, but I mean, a lot of that is also up to your team, but at least understanding like when you need to be in certain places or where the pressure is coming can really help your own play as well. But uh, yeah, it's, it's very much like a, a team thing. It's a team game. So uh, yeah, like understanding that sort of strategy only helps so much. It's you need your teammates to understand as well, but it does help you uh, still a little bit. So uh, there you go. Covered a bunch of stuff in this. Uh, always interesting to see the bronze games. It, it is every time now I'm going into one of these, I get really scared to predict stuff because it can go so differently, right? Your expectation of what ought to happen um, 
is so skewed because the strategies and the mechanics can be so skewed, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I think it was really interesting coming through this and seeing, like, I think it really showed the lack of wave clear in the enemy team, uh, the amount of melee heroes they had. Um, it was funny, actually, you know, reading the list of the heroes, uh, I didn't really uh, cop on to that. At first, I actually thought they had a better composition, probably. But uh, yeah, once I got into the game and then I actually like looked at the mini-map and thought about it, I went, oh yeah, wait, they have like no wave clear. This is pretty scary for you guys, uh, unless they know how to play it well. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a big burden on them. They couldn't pull it off. And the same thing with the dive, they couldn't pull it off either. Um, yeah, very interesting insight for me as well into bronze. And hopefully for everyone watching as well, give a like, guys, if you liked the video, if you enjoyed it. If you want to send in your own replays, I still have I've uh, quite a few stored up, but... Um, when this is coming out, there's probably going to be a new patch fairly soon after this is coming out. So with the new patch, send them in then. Uh, I get like, apparently a lot of our old our replays can be stuck in this older client, which isn't as good, the replay client that is, because of hot fixes and stuff. But yeah, I, I will be trying to keep all the replays like current to the current patch. So get them in with each current patch. Because uh, I, I, I can't get through all the ones we get for any given patch anyway. Like this one was from five days ago or something. I'm trying to trying to play catch up and like this won't come out until uh, for a few days after I've recorded. So like I'm already about a week behind or something like that. I don't know. But yeah, get them in with the new patch. Uh, I'd say if you're sending them in for... If you're still on the Zarya patch, you're not going to get them in. If you got the Samuro patch, we're good. Get them in for the Samuro patch, because uh, I'll probably be needing a few of those. Um, but yeah, you'll find the email in the description below. Also, get involved in the comments if you want to talk about it, if you've got any feedback. Uh, very much appreciated, uh, or stuff that you would like me to talk about uh, in these types of videos. But uh, there you go, guys. That is all I've got. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Oh, let me know as well how the email -y thing kind of worked out. Or, I suppose... People could specify if they want their email to be shown. Generally speaking, it's fairly mild, right? There's there's nothing too compromising. I won't show it like your email details or anything like that. But I think it's just kind of useful. Uh, unless it says something personal or something embarrassing, like I won't show it. I'll be I'll be uh, discriminating in how I, I choose. Um, but yeah, like something like that, just talking about the drafts and the talents and stuff, I think fits pretty well. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you all next time. Bye.